we've uh, reached the appointed hour, so I'll declare the meeting open and uh, pay our respects to the Tasmanian Aboriginal community, traditional custodians of land we're meeting on tonight, and pay our respects to owners past and present. Can I also remind us all that the meeting is being recorded audio-visually and will be available on our website later this week. Special council meeting. Uh, Basically, we've got two items on the agenda. The second deals with the estimates, capital expenditure program and fees and charges, which I intend to take separately as uh, separate motions. In the first instance, uh, Alderman Thurley is on leave. Uh, there's no other apologies. So item 2A, that the estimates for 2018-19 attached as attachment 1 be adopted. Moved Alderman Campbell. Seconded Alderman Cusick. Would you like to speak to I think that it's been all workshopped very thoroughly and uh, we can move on. Alderman Cusick? Oh, no, I just agree with Alderman Campbell. That we've been through it time and time again and I think a 2.6% rate increase is quite reasonable. Any other speakers? Alderman James. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, uh, what the GM and his team have done is, is, is uh, outstanding to reduce it from over three percent down to two point six. Uh, my understanding is that the CPI is two point four, or that is within the local government ballpark figure. And uh, I did make a suggestion that um, we could uh, uh, bring over uh, a lesser amount from the from the estimate rates to. Um, to the renewal of the capital works, I suggested that, and uh, and around the table it was, I believe it was, that wasn't the way to go to stick to Mr. Barter's 10-year uh, works program in a sense. And secondly, uh, I have difficulty with these um, com uh, council committees. I actually suggested, and that was on the advice. When we went on the um, on the bus tour, that there was a hundred and ten thousand on the um, uh, Cremorne to South Arm Highway, and uh, it was suggested that that project probably wasn't uh, in, in in a time frame which is suitable for council, and another project that came up was to do some footpath works in Cremorne. Uh, and that estimate was about 72,000 or thereabouts. So in other words, the Tracks and Trails Committee, and obviously that was one of those projects that was uh, listed in there for consideration. And uh, I agreed that 72,000 of that or thereabouts should be allocated to provide some, some gravel footpaths or a reasonable footpath in Cremorne. So that was really 40,000 that uh, we agreed to perhaps could be saved in the capital works and used, utilised for some other program. And also priority number eight, which was a small access way off Gordons Hill Road for 20,000, it was suggested and that was through the Tracks and Trails Committee that if there was a project that needed to come out, then that one was the uh, council uh, left it in, okay, because they believed it was appropriate to leave it in. But there were two examples of where we're trying to save a few dollars and also be able to uh, not have a greater impact on the um, capital works and also perhaps the, the actual um, uh, carryover of funds from the estimates to prop up the uh, renewal on the capital works. It could have been of a lesser amount and obviously brought, would have contributed to bring that down to 2.4% in, in accordance with the, the actual um, uh, CPI for the local government area. But the other thing in relation to committees and that is that on the uh, tracks and trails we agreed to be able to uh, utilise um, some of those funds for other projects but again we have a couple of these committees that are 
in my view, making a dash for cash. And that means that uh, I think that's impacting upon the annual estimates. I think there could have been savings as we in the tracks and trails of the committee had suggested that that should be the case. If it had been brought down to 2.4, I would have supported it. I will not support the 2.6. Other speakers? Gordon here. Mr Mayor, uh, once again we're having a, a debate over um, you know, arbitrary numbers. I, I mean, I, okay, yes, there's some meaning in the numbers, but um, there's no you know, magic rule that says uh, a, a increase that meets CPI is good or an increase, or increase above it's bad or an increase that meets the local government um, you know, cost of service index is good but one above that is bad. Um, on, on reflection I understood that what, what we were coming up with was um, you know, an, an increase that reflects the um, local government cost of service index but allowing another 0.2% that reflects what will be the additional cost of um, you know, providing re recycling services because of the, you know, the China ban and the, and the impact that that's had. And that's something that's not, not reflected in that index. So in reality, if we take that into account, the index probably is uh, more like 2.6%. Um, but uh, what, I, what I would suggest to, to Alderman James or any other Alderman is um, if you're not uh, willing to accept the budget, if you think there's a better way of doing things, if you think there's a better figure to arrive at and you've got, a, you've got an idea of how to arrive at that and what projects should be in and out, um, then the, the constructive thing to do would be to have an alternate motion ready and, and move that alternate motion. Um, yeah, I, I think, um, I don't see that just voting against the council budget um, without, you know, uh, without at least having the alternative and, and, and being ready to debate it um, is a very constructive way to, to go about things. Thank you. Well, I think you were... Ending up. Um, I support the budget. However, I do think that there are improvements we could make in the manner and process by which we get to it. I find the workshops a little disheartening when there is a constant barrage of undermining of the committee structures when the committee structures actually are a more fair and democratic approach to the application of spending money for this council than anything else I participate in. And so I would like to recommend that in the future, for next year, we start with the committees at deliberating on recommendations earlier because for me the main problem when we get to the workshops is that there hasn't been enough conversation between the committees and the management. So within that there is a communication gap and often I have found just from my perspective that there's a, that misunderstanding on uh, strategic options or uh, priorities is not understood by upper management because they don't sit in on the committee structures all that often. So maybe we could consider next year starting earlier for the committees, involving the managers at a later date when they've come to their priority recommendations, but also within looking at those recommendations, I don't think that the council should look at undermining um, a budgetary strategy by then falling into the game plan of bargy bargy, which happens in workshops. Because I find that to be unprofessional, unstrategic and definitely morally demoralising for chairmen who have to go back to committees and try and explain why the rest of the council didn't understand. So in the future, we need to be a little bit more supportive of our committees. Certainly we don't need chairmen who undermine them and, um, and I think we'll get a better outcome. Thank you. Other speakers? Alderman Pearce. Yeah, normally I, I wouldn't talk on these because as we've said, we've had months of going through this and working for, to a figure and you know we've had all the committees and all this and everything else. 
I still think it can be improved. I, I wouldn't just take a negative approach and say you know, everything's hunky dory. I still think Alderman James has raised some valid points, and probably the committee one uh, is another one that sort of can be looked at. But now we're doing the budget. Now is not the time, but in future, now's the time to bring those things up so we can can do it better. There's things that I didn't like in this whole process we did, there's things I did like and I lost a few and I won a few. I think it's a pretty responsible, though it's this council has been responsible in the budget figure for many, many, many years. We're all not going to agree, we all understand that and it's a long, long process. I do like our bus trip, I, I'm sort of hoping that our bus trip can be a bit early with a bit more things on maybe we need to because I think it's important to get out and have a look at our own <coughs> city and some of the things that our city could do with it. So when committees come to us and say we want this, this and this for this, this and this, so yeah, all right, we did that on our bus trip, we know. And that may be something that can appease some aldermen are not happy with this process. But I think when I look at the other councils around this area, I think we're pretty united pretty united and I think this is a very, very uh, sensible response. Uh, uh, an increase, yes, a relatively small increase and look, I think our staff and the Alderman have done a fantastic job. Other speakers? Mm -hmm. Alderman Walker. Yes, uh, a few points. Um, are there things that I find egregious in the budget? Yep, and I suspect uh, if I sat down with a copy with each of you, you'd be able to pull one out of each. There'd be, be some reason for us to say, no, it's not on. But I don't think uh, we want to be in the blocking supply business uh, unless there's a very good reason, and the threshold <laughs> isn't there this time. Um, one thing I'd note about this process, and it's been one of the, one of the down, whilst I think as this four year term comes to a close, there's a, a lot of things that we can point to as achievements. One of the distractions pretty much throughout the whole term has been the merger discussions. And we've been participating in those in good faith, but whilst we've been engaging in that process, um, you know, the, the, the um, focus on organic refinement, uh, on, on industry best practice, perhaps hasn't been what it could be. Um, and I think that's something you know I like to would like to relook again. There are models, and uh, the general manager knows my feelings on models like the contract city uh, model. We do have elements of that in what we do, um, but uh, yeah, we should be yeah you know, looking at each thing we do and seeing whether there's any council that's doing what we do better. And in which case, we should be learning from them. Um, the topic of committees has come out from several different aldermen across this table, uh, and they've each had some valid points around that component. Uh, I think we should be mindful of you know what expenditures is you know being requested from each committee and, 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 and the basis behind it. And, and often it's quite meritorious. The bottom line, however, is they are advisory, not directorate. And sometimes when you're sitting around the table, it doesn't seem like that's that's quite the way. Alderman McFarland is quite right. They are a very good, informative, democratic process. However, the ultimate democratic informative process will be the committee of Clarence um, residents and ratepayers who will be making their decision uh, in October. <coughs> uh, <coughs> Alderman Hugh made points around the arbitrariness of a number and I think these are some valid things to say. I do like looking at things such as the consumer price index I think is is it not, not the most useful measure, but it's, it's a measure out there. But if we don't take into account things like council cost index or consumer price index, then we could lose a little bit of discipline. The, the fact that it's a little bit frightening that any council can pretty much ratchet up their rates by any amount they determine uh, means that there, there can be a little bit of largesse and sloth uh, form in some uh, municipalities. And we must be mindful and ever vigilant of sloth. Um, so, I'm likely to be supporting the estimates, um, the fees and charges I suspect and, and probably the capital expenditure, although in, in each and every element uh, I've got, got issues. But um, in the context of this climate, in the context of the challenges, um, I think we could have done better, but I think it's reasonable, so I'll be supporting. Thank you. Right, I'll be Campbell. 
No, I believe everyone's given, there's been some good comments made around the, the table and uh, that and I think uh, we understand the direction we're going in and that this is a positive uh, uh, budget that uh, I believe everyone's contributed to and uh, The motion is that the estimates for 2018-19 attached to attachment 1 be adopted. All those in favour? Against? The motion is carried. Um, 2B, that the capital expenditure program for 2018-19 attached as attachment 2 be adopted. Alderman James, thank you. Alderman Tong. Alderman James, would you like to speak to it? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I would like to draw Council's attention to page 9 of the officer's report and just um, highlight uh, <coughs> some of these key factors which I believe are really uh, important ones which Council needs to consider. The uh, footpath curb and gutter renewal of 1.28. Uh, the officers have, uh, and have over the last few years uh, made sure I think that we continue to have that as part of our program and that is commendable. The other one is the Kangaroo Bay breakwater of 590,000. Again, that was a, a sterling effort on council uh, getting into the sharing of, of uh, ideas and so on with the community and in relation to the uh, notwithstanding council was the proponent of the DA, but nevertheless, the way that was handled and, and I think the, the contribution from the public uh, and the full briefing from experts on the night uh, was, was great. The other one that I have, and I know others around this table have been uh, pursuing, is the Alinga Street stormwater upgrades of 200,000. That has really been an important issue. Uh, it was left out of part of the program in previous years, and that will go a long way. The other one that has been high on the agenda is the South Arm drainage improvements. There have been a lot of problems with um, uh, stormwater runoff, particularly uh, onto the section of the village of, of the South Arm Highway, which is um, abuts a number of residences. Uh, it's good to see, and I know uh, colleague Alderman Cusick will be uh, keen, of course, and obviously has had a lot to do with the Lauderdale Beach small boat access of 100,000. And one that I know a number of us have really been keen to, to pursue is the Riston Vale Oval lighting upgrade and catching nets and this was decided that it may be uh, sooner rather than later to get this particular ground up to some standard in order to have it being available for other uh, groups in the community to utilise. Uh, the only other comment I will make and that is in relation to the the, um, the borrowings. I, Before I finish I probably would like Mr Barter, his capacity is the, I think we can refer to him as the Director of Finance in this place, and that is on the uh, attachment two, it refers to, amongst other things, the borrowings of 7.8%. Uh, I thought there was a contrary, entra, contrary entry of 75 because it all depended on us whether we were successful in, in, in achieving that uh, uh, amount and by having the 7.5, which I think is the actual cost uh, in relation to the Seven Mile Beach uh, Sports Precinct, that that was going to be under the expenditure as either a, a line item or incorporated within either active or passive recreation. But if you look at the actual expenditure, active recreation is only 4.6 and the Passive recreation is 1.066. So my question through you, Mr Mayor, to Mr Barter, is that the 7.5, which I understood to be um, used below as, as, a, as a, an offset or expenditure item, in the event that we're unsuccessful in obtaining <coughs> that uh, grant towards the 15,000, uh, if he could explain that to me, and I'd be happy to understand. Uh -huh. Uh, through you, Mr Mayor, um, it is indeed correct that there is 7.5 million borrowings uh, proposed in the budget and there are um, offsetting projects, plural, um, in relation to that. 
um, in relation to the seven mile or proposed seven mile beach recreation facility. Those projects are actually split between two programs, one is active recreation and the other one is road. Um, if I refer all to section 2.18 of the report, um, there's specific mention made there that um, yes, the borrowings and the association expenditure are predicated in the budget. Um, however, um, no, only planning will continue on that. No works will actually commence without uh, the matter coming back before the council that would need to be attended to any event. Um, however, Thank you, Mr. Matt. Um, just briefly, obviously the program including that 7.5 million is some $24 million, which is a pretty extensive capital works pro program for the year. Um, as was mentioned with the estimates, there are always things even in the capital works that some of us will like, some of us would prefer not to be in there, but I think on the whole, the work that the officers have done and we as aldermen have done in, in workshops has come to a good considered amount, and I seek council support. Oh, just a quick question. Um, within 2.17, at the bottom of the list there are two public toilets for DDA compliance. One is Calverton Hall at 200,000 and the next is Howrah Community Centre at 300,000. Is there any way I can find out why there's a difference? Graham, you able to shed some light on this please? Uh, true, um, we're still waiting on the master plan to, to be finished for the, um, the Howrah Centre, but it is a lot bigger uh, facility um, in terms of that one and the, the master plan will help. Obviously we don't all agree with every item of capital expenditure, but in aggregate, I think it's a, a very sensible capital program. Could I just ask one question just to refresh my memory? The 800,000 in property sales, what were the properties we sold? The in income, funding, property sales? Property sales? 800,000. Mr. Barton? For you, Mr. Mayor, um, that represents the balance of the sale proceeds from the Kangaroo Bay property. Um, so, um, Council um, appropriated, I think it was 1.6 million in the, um, the current property. Good. That the, the ultimate sale price reflected the, a more current value, a general's valuation, than what the earlier price that we've been led to believe. <laughs> The other speakers, Paul well, Walker. So we have it before us, uh, the projects and the estimates. Uh, one of the things I think we've all got to prepare ourselves this year and possibly prepare the community for is um, that these are not all <coughs> signed, sealed contracts. These are projections. These are projections in a market that's been described as fairly hot, to put it mildly. Um, and if it's a case of delaying rather than overpaying for stuff, then I think we need to be very upfront and honest with the community. Uh, and I suspect if we have that open dialogue, they'll understand whilst a certain item might be delayed rather than it being delivered this year at three times the cost. But um, this is probably the biggest um, challenge I think facing the capital program in this year. Motion is that the capital expenditure program for 2018-19 attached as attachment to be adopted. All those in favour? Carried unanimously. Item 2C, that the new list of fees and charges attached as attachment 3 be adopted. Uh, moved to Alderman <coughs> James, second of the order. Alderman <coughs> James? Yes, uh, I'll be brief, Mr Mayor. Um, there has been some discussion, obviously, at the workshop, and I seek council support. Charges attached to attachment three be adopted. All those in favour? Carried unanimously. Thank you. I'll declare the meeting closed.